Hello, I'm Dylan Hinson, and today I'm going to show you how to concatenate concatenated files together. That's how to concatenate samples that have already been concatenated. So why might we need to do this? Sometimes we'd want to do this because maybe we're doing our analysis, we collect some data, we make a workspace, we you know, do some analysis on the samples, we then concatenate the samples together in order to do analysis as a group and perform TSNE and dimensionality reduction and clustering on the concatenated file in order for it to be comparable across all the different samples. But then maybe after we concatenate our files together, we then want to do more analysis on later days in a different workspace. So I collect more data, I make a new workspace, I do further analysis with new files, I then concatenate those files together and then do group owned analysis. But then maybe I want to compare the files between day one and day two, or the, the two different you know, collection dates. Well, if I want to do that, what I can do, there's kind of multiple things I could do. I could be loading all these files into the same workspace, but if I do that, it might get kind of large, and some of the later analysis might not be similar to the earlier analysis. That could be like a few reasons why I might not want to put all the files together in the same workspace. So what I could do instead is I can concatenate the files together, the, the population of interest in each of the workspaces together. And then with those concatenated files from each workspace, I could then concatenate those files together to make one large file. That way I can run dimensionality reduction and clustering on this file that has been concatenated twice, this large file that combines files from both workspaces. And then I can make comparisons between the two different workspaces. So for instance, in this case, I have two workspaces here. I have on the left treatment one and on the right treatment two. And so what I want to do is I want to compare these two treatments together, but I don't necessarily want to load all the samples from one workspace into the other. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to concatenate the files from one workspace together and then concatenate the files in the second workspace and then combine them. So let's go ahead and do that. I've already kind of set myself up to concatenate. I've downsampled my population that I want to concatenate together, my CD3 positive cells. And so the reason I downsampled is because I want to normalize the cell count from each sample. So I want the same number of cells from each sample for the CD3 positive population. Um, because I believe that the CD3 positive population should be similar for all these samples. And there was a bias I introduced when I was collecting the data because I didn't collect the same number of cells in each of my samples. So I want to just normalize them that way I can make more fair comparisons between each sample. And you don't necessarily have to do this step. I just chose to do it for my analysis. So since I've gone and done this, I'm going to go ahead and choose my down sample population here, down CD3. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do my normal steps for concatenating files together. So first, I'm going to go ahead and create some keywords, because that's always good for concatenation. So I'm going to go ahead and add a keyword up here, keywords, add keyword. I'm going to make my first keyword called my treatment. And so what this is going to be is a, a value to represent my treatment group, which this is going to be treatment one. So I want them all to be one. So I can do that by going um, up here. I can um, copy the value to group, and I have one selected, so I'm just going to copy the one to the whole group. I could have mainly typed that in, just hit one and enter a bunch of times, but that was easier. So um, Then I'm going to go ahead and choose, well, I'm not ready yet. I still want to separate out each of my samples later, perhaps. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and make a new keyword, keyword, add a keyword. I'm going to call this one ID. And so what I'm going to do here then is for the ID keyword, I'm just going to do it um, I just want to ID each of my samples in this treatment group to then be able to split them out later. So I'm just going to create a keyword value series. It's going to start at one, it's going to increase by one. And so what it's going to look like is it's going to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that way I can later split out each of my samples based on that keyword. Then what I'm going to do, choose my population of interest, my down sample population here, select equivalent nodes to choose each of those in the treatment group. And then I'm going to go ahead and concatenate these files together. Concatenate. I'm going to go ahead, give it a name. I'm going to call it treatment one. Oops. I'm going to go ahead and choose additional parameters down there. I'm going to go and choose the two parameters I just made, which were ID and treatment. Perfect. Choose both those parameters. Very important, I want to untick the spread distribution of keyword box. So that way, 
these are going to be values like one, two, three, four, and there won't be any distribution to them. Um, I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to use uncompensated parameters. You might consider using compensated parameters. The only time I would use compensated parameters is if I had a different compensation matrix for each of my workspaces for the, the files I'm concatenating together. So then I might want to use compensated parameters because then the compensation is going to be different from each one. But in this case, since I use the same compensation matrix for both workspaces, I'm going to use uncompensated parameters. That way I can apply a compensation matrix to the concatenated file later. Then if I want to make changes to my compensation, I can do that and then reapply the new compensation matrix to that concatenated file. This looks good how I have it set up here. I'm going to go ahead and concatenate. It's going to go to my desktop, it looks like. So I should see it down there. Perfect, it just finished. Then I'm going to go do the same thing to the other workspace here on my right. I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to add a keyword. I'm going to call this treatment. I'm going to call this two, though, because this is treatment two. I'm going to go ahead and copy that value to the group. So they're all treatment, because they're all part of this treatment two group. I'm going to go ahead, add another keyword, call it ID. So here what I could do, I could start where this one left off. So this one went one, two, three through eight, because there's eight samples. I could start here and start at nine if I really wanted to. Um, so when I create my keyword value series, I could start at nine, but I'm not going to do that necessarily because um, I can actually split it out pretty easy later anyways if I start at one again. I just want a unique ID for each of the samples in this concatenated file. I don't necessarily have to have it be unique for the final concatenated file for this keyword. And the reason that is is because I'm already going to split them on the basis of their treatment, so I can just further split them by ID afterwards. So let's do it this way. OK, one, two, three. It's going to go to eight. Perfect. Um, so then what I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and choose my population of interest. OK, I'm going to go down here, going to go to treatment two. I'm going to go ahead and Choose my parameters of interest again. ID and treatment, right? That's what I called it. Yep. Okay. And then untick the spread. This looks good. Gonna hit oh, concatenate. Okay, perfect. I'm gonna open this in a new workspace now. I'm gonna go ahead and close these two workspaces. I don't need them anymore. I'll save them because why not? Okay, loaded automatically the treatment two file. So here's treatment one. Perfect. Now, it's funny that this is one less cell. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and concatenate these two files together. So I'm going to select them both and then concatenate them together. I'm going to go ahead and choose a custom set of parameters. And the reason I'm doing this step is because when I concatenate a file together, it automatically creates a sample ID keyword. And that keyword, it can be useful for separating out the files, except the sample ID keyword will always create values like one, two, three, in the order the samples were in top to bottom in the workspace when they were concatenated. So right now, for instance, if I made a sample ID keyword, which I'm about to do, treatment two is gonna be one on that sample ID keyword, which is confusing. That's why I made the treatment keyword instead, and that's what I'm going to use to separate the files. I'm going to ignore the sample ID keyword. But what I have to do here is I have to view and select. I'm going to get rid of that first sample ID keyword that it made when I first concatenated these files, but I don't want it. I do want my ID keyword that was deselected for some reason. OK, all the rest of these keywords look great. I don't need this down sample one either, so I'm just going to take that one out too. All the rest of these look great. Um, I'm going to hit OK there. Rename this to combine treatments. Um, no additional parameters to include this time because they're already in the file. So I'm just going to go ahead and concatenate. Can I open that in a new workspace as well? OK. So I can close this one now. Nope. OK, so here's my combined concatenation. And so what I'm going to do here then, I maybe want to split back out all my samples from this concatenate file, or at least I want to be able to you know, find out where the two groups are within this. After I run TST, I'm going to need to you know, compare those two groups. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down to my x-axis and change my x-axis to the treatment keyword. And if I put it on linear scale, maybe customize it just to get it from um, linear, showing at zero, going to four, sure. Perfect. Change this to histogram. You can see I have two peaks here of the same size because I downsampled, so they had the same number of samples and the same number of cells, so they're each the same. Um, and you can see I have treatment one and treatment two clearly here. I can go ahead, create gates on peaks to split these two treatment groups back out. Treatment one, treatment two are now split out. I can rename them here. Those are my two populations. Treatment one. Because I knew treatment one corresponded with one and treatment two corresponded with the two value for that treatment parameter. So now I have the two treatment groups. What I can go ahead and do now is open up one of the treatments. You can see I only have cells from treatment one here in this population. If I go ahead and change the x axis to ID now, you'll see I have eight, um, one through eight. And I'm going to actually change it so that way it can have a light of them in view. Um, eight different samples, all of the same cells, cell counts. Um, and so now what I want to do is I'm going to go ahead and split these up. Now these won't include the samples that are in treatment two because I'm under I'm on that treatment group now, so I only have cells that were in treatment one here. So it didn't matter that I had the ID keyword be the same for both of these because I already was going to split them. In, I knew into treatment one, treatment two initially, so I could just further split them from there. Um, let me go ahead and create gates on peaks. Okay, now I got all eight of my samples again. I could go ahead and rename each of those if I wanted to, but um, for the sake of time, I'm just gonna go ahead and go to my treatment two and do the same thing just to show that I can. Okay, great. And so now I have all 16 of my samples or 16 of my populations of interest really from each of those 16 samples together in the same workspace so that way, when I do TSNI and phenograph and other types of clustering and dimensionality debt reduction on this concatenated file, I can then apply it to each of the treatment groups and each of the subsamples. All right, thank you for learning with me how to concatenate files that have already been concatenated. See you next time.